Hi there and welcome to another video in which we're going to be having a look at Giraffe and Annika. But before we begin, let's manage expectations and get this out of the way from the start. Giraffe is not an actual giraffe, but an anime cat boy. Giraffe and Annika just released today, August the 25th, 2020, on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, with an Xbox release following on the 27th, and the PC version has been released since February this year. The game was created by Japanese developer Atelier Mimina and published by NIS America and it is quite a unique take on a JRPG. I went into this game completely blind and was pleasantly surprised if a little confused. Giraffe and Annika is an adventure game of sorts. You control the ubiquitous Japanese cat girl character called Annika as she explores Spicer Island with the assistance of cat boy character Giraffe, trying to restore her lost memories. Giraffe quickly explains to Annika that by retrieving star fragments from the dungeons located around the island, she should start to get back to her normal self and all will become clear. The catch? Annika is the only one able to enter these dungeons. As you start the game, Annika has extremely limited abilities. Apparently, her amnesia has even affected her basic motor functions, such as her ability to jump, which is completely absent until she completes the first dungeon. Completing subsequent dungeons adds further abilities to Annika's repertoire. This is where things get a little different and diverge from a standard JRPG. It's also where my confusion began. You cannot kill the denizens of the dungeons. You cannot even attack them. You just have to avoid them, run away, or if they catch up to you, try to take as little damage as possible and recharge your health at the overly plentiful restoration points. I continued playing thinking I would eventually unlock some kind of attack in the same manner that I unlock jump or swim, but no, there is nothing, no attacking whatsoever for the entire game with possibly the slight exception of dungeon bosses. These encounters are set up as a rhythm type dance off challenge. You have to select left or right as the boss hurls orbs of light at you and click at the optimal time on the beat to reduce the boss's health bar. If you miss, your health bar is depleted. That is honestly the extent of any kind of combat action in the entire game. But honestly, that's okay. Action isn't what this game is about. It's a narrative adventure. You are afforded a certain amount of freedom to explore the island, but areas are closed off and until you have completed certain sections of the story, so the game is in effect confined to rails by the narrative. Characters you meet along the way will have additional quests for you, some gated behind a night and day cycle. There are a total of five dungeons as well as optional challenges and collectibles to complete along the way, just to flesh out the five to eight hour completion time. It's easier to define this game by what it isn't than what it is. It isn't a visual novel, it isn't a 3D platformer, it isn't a dungeon crawler, and it isn't a rhythm game. But it is a little bit of all of those things, and the whole is definitely greater than the sum of its parts. The story is well constructed and genuinely pleasant and well paced. In fact, the entire game is best described as pleasant. The graphics are beautiful and the soundtrack complements them perfectly, creating a quintessential anime atmosphere that can best be described as pleasant. I have no real criticism of this game, it is exactly and unapologetically what it is. Its execution is faultless and level of polish quite outstanding. It's definitely a Marmite or Vegemite type affair, as in you will either love it or hate it. It really isn't a type of game that on paper I would have thought I might enjoy, but in all honesty I really did. The completion time of the game for me was perfect. I finished it in just over 5 hours. More or less would have felt either laboured or rushed. There are additional tasks for completionists, but my attention span was sated. I am genuinely glad I reviewed this game or I probably wouldn't have bothered with it and I would have missed out on a quirky little gem. That's it for this video, thank you very much for watching. As usual, if you'd like to support us, please consider hitting the like, follow and subscribe buttons and check out the website at www.enrd.cc. Also check out and follow on Twitter at Ashra1 for all the latest news, reviews and live giveaways. That's it for now, see you next time.